Mr. Kimball. Hello, Senators. How are you? I'm doing well, Senator Kappian. Uh, well, since we had to speak, I think it was probably at the Capitol Plaza, so. It probably was, yeah. Yeah, well, it's good to see you again. And I believe Lynn Coda might be jumping on at some point as well. Uh, superintendent up there in Franklin Northeast. Remind me, Bill, where's Maple Run School District? So the reason we, we asked you to come in is when we were talking with Jeff Fannin um, of the NEA, we were talking about, and, and we're working on another facility, as I feel, that we're going to be taken through by Ledge Council tomorrow and pick up next week. But we're really looking at issues in the state where there may be some big discrepancies around offerings. In other words, uh, you know, you... I can just think of my own personal experience with my cousins up at a little school in the Northeast Kingdom. Great school, yeah. lots of incredible opportunities. But compared to maybe some more urban areas, again, this is somewhat anecdotal, not as many opportunities. So we could, we could certainly start there. And so what we're trying to figure out in, in a little bit with our friends in appropriations and, and others is, first of all, how big is the need? In other words, we do not want kids. We know kids are competing globally. We know kids are also competing with other kids you know, within the country. And we don't want kids leaving schools without as many opportunities as possible. You know, if you're the kid that really wants to take a class in Chinese, given the technology today, it seems to me that we want to be able to offer some of those innovative, exciting things. We're also quite cognizant of the fact that if there are two kids that really want to take Chinese, the school probably isn't going to hire somebody, nor would the person be able to, you know, financially figure out a life anywhere in Vermont with housing, et cetera where they could just go and teach a couple classes of Chinese. So we're looking at different things, and I've been telling my own personal story here where I'm taking a History of Boston class, my first online class ever, through Harvard Extension. Anybody can sign up. And I've been so impressed by how much you really can get through these online experiences, you know, with discussion boards, the faculty member, uh, all sorts of other supports out there. And so if this 52-year-old guy can do it, I bet a lot of people, a hell of a lot younger than I can, can, can get something out of it. So that's the situation we're looking at. We're also talking with appropriations related to that. Should, do we need to have some funding set aside for schools that want to be able to offer things and just can't right now? Uh, so that's the situation.
Did you know any of the, do, I don't know if we've talked about this, any of the Penix in Craftsbury or Hazen? Well, I know their experience, you know, that's, uh, Patrick is my uncle, and uh, yeah. so his kids were at Craftsbury Academy, and, you know, again, great things, uh, incredible, but not always a ton, I think, of different offerings. So Bill, can it, can you, is it working out in that regard then in your district? I, I mean, are you using technology in some? Have you tried it though with kids that, you know, again, you're not, I was speaking with some constituents recently and some young women were saying that they didn't realize this, but talking to their therapist is better over Zoom than in person. You know, and they were talking about are there ways to make sure when they go away to school, they can continue to work with their therapist and get reimbursed for that kind of thing. Do you ever go to the student that, again, you, you might not know that much about and just say, hey, Sally, Mike, you want to try this class?
And before we move to Lynn, I'm just curious, uh, and others may have a question about some of this, but funding for these kinds of things, this is all, this is all built into your budget. Uh, so I'm curious about that. Secondly, is there, um, either have you experienced personally or do you know of schools where there's some real technological deficiencies that the state should know about to make sure that we can get funds to certain schools so that they too, around equity, can participate in these things that other kids can participate in? Yeah, and you know, I've seen the CUDs in some districts. I feel like they're really knocking it out of the park. We heard from Christine Holquist, who, you know, oversees this for the state. Mm -hmm. And I, I left the meeting feeling like she's got her eye on those areas, particularly where, you know, that there's real need and equity issues. Um, but I appreciate knowing that. Uh, Senator Dulick. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Superintendent Kimball, for speaking with us. Much appreciated. Uh, um, and thank you for your work. It's not easy. Um, I was just wondering if there's still a program by which you can have a faculty member teach a VT VLC class and get a certain number of students to be able to take a course for free. Do they still do that?
On a totally different subject, you mentioned that kids from first grade on have a device. I'm just wondering as an educator if you have any thoughts on uh, the effects of screen time on, on ch ch children's brains. Thank you. Great. Senator Weeks. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, uh, Superintendent Kimball, I'm still trying to get my head around the 90% of uh, students, that 90% of the students are uh, who, qual who do not qualify for free or reduced lunch are the ones who are requesting or utilizing the uh, online access courses. Um, and I understand that internet access uh, potentially in, in your district's region is problematic. I'm just the question really is, is there, in the school, is there enough bandwidth and access that's, um, that allows uh, a fair use of the system, of the remote courses, uh, and that the, then that the inhibitor is somewhere else, it's not in, in the school facility itself? It's not in the school's physical facility, okay. let me say it that way. And is there... And then, let me just follow up. And there's, is there enough time in the school day for a student to, to utilize a remote program? Okay, thank you.
Yeah, uh, Senator Kewitt. Superintendent Cota, thank you so much for being with us. Um, I really appreciate how difficult your jobs are, especially uh, during and post pandemic. So thank you very, very much. Uh, I, I'm really glad that you brought up your um, you know, alternative programs. I think often what I hear from folks is that um, a, uh, their child or a student doesn't fit into a public school. And I often have to explain to folks that within a public school structure, you can often have alternative programs or even like alternative schools. Um, I know in Burlington, we have Horizons and On Top and at Essex High School where I taught before we had a program called ACE. Um, so I just really appreciate that there's a concerted effort within the public sphere to meet the needs of all kinds of learners and all with all different kinds of talents, abilities, et cetera. Um, so thank you for bringing that up. Thank you, you're welcome. Any other questions for Ms. Coda at this point? No. Or Mr. Kimball? This is really helpful. I, you know, I would still like to figure out the piece around the free and reduced lunch kids that you know aren't taking advantage of some of this technology. And uh, if there's something that you think we should have our eye on related to that, I, you know, let us know. Again, what we're in some conversations with the probes, it's really, you know, I love that what Senator uh, Gulick just said, how can we make our public schools more vibrant, more interesting, offer different classes, whether they're online or get different teachers in. Part-time teachers is something we're having a serious, we're going to have a serious look at with the house. You know, it, how can we, you know, deal with this teacher shortage as well as not lose, well, only improve, you know, the academics and the experiences that kids are having. So if you do have ideas, uh, this is a place to bring them. Lynn, what percentage um, of your students would you say don't have access?
Thanks, Lynn. We can always loop back to you as we continue our work on this. Bill, any other final comments from you? We need to take a few minutes of a break before we move on to our next meeting, but any concluding comments? Thank you both. Really makes a difference when you're able to be with us like this. So thank you and also thanks for everything you do. And we'll keep you posted on some of our progress on other fronts and uh, likely have you back later this year. All right, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye, good to see you both. Camille, let's take five and we'll come back. And we'll